Hey everyone, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today I'm going to be going over a very short tutorial on how I did this sushi go round or conveyor belt uh, that I made in my latest GIF here. So you can see in this uh, little GIF that I have these sushi pieces falling onto the plates, actually they're nigiri, uh, but they're falling onto these plates and then our conveyor belt kind of slides and the plates go around with it. Uh, so there's a very easy way to get these plates to stick to a surface and in this instance it was a spline wrap uh, surface uh, and I have another version here. Uh, so it's easy enough to get an object to stick to another object uh, and move along with it. And this final one here is the one, uh, the version I'll actually be going over and demonstrating is where I have the plates uh, flipping below and just kind of going in a little loop-de-loop -loop here. So we've got a little sushi loop-de-loop -loop, uh, that I'll be demonstrating on how to do. So I'll show you how to uh, prep your model for this kind of situation, this kind of conveyor belt setup, and then uh, how to actually make the conveyor belt with, with uh, just a spline wrap, it's very simple, and then sticking the plates, sticking objects to move along with the offset of the spline wrapped uh, surface there. So very easy setup, this will be a very quick tutorial, uh, so let's just jump right in. Alright, so to make our little sushi go round, we need to prep our model or whatever we're going to use to uh, that we want to stick onto our conveyor belt. So I have this plate here, no sushi on it just yet, uh, but the first thing we need to do to prep this is the way that we're going to work is uh, we're going to clamp this object or glue this object onto the conveyor belt and what uh, the, the method that we're going to use is going to use the axis point to actually uh, be the point where it's going to stick to the object, to the conveyor belt. So what we need to do is make this axis center be positioned to the butt at the center of the object, the center middle in the X and Y and Z, but we also need to align this to the very bottom of our plate or whatever object you're sticking to. So this point right here will be where it will stick to the conveyor belt. So you want to give it a little bit of uh, wiggle room so you don't have any geometry intersection. Uh, so you don't want it like right here because the geometry would have the tem uh, the plate would have a tendency to actually go through the geometry of the conveyor belt. So I just like to give it a little bit of wiggle room and we're looking at just like hundreds of a percent of centimeter here. So that's pretty good. And if you zoom out, you, you don't even notice. Uh, so I just like to give it a little wiggle room there to prevent any geometry intersection. And now we can actually make our conveyor belt. So it was a very simple setup uh, for the scene that I made. It was just a plane uh, that I spline wrapped along a rectangle spline. So I'll get my spline wrap, rectangle, and uh, plane. So what I did was I put the spline wrap underneath the plane. Uh, and then spline wrap that along the rectangle. And you can see that we need to do a little bit of editing with our uh, geometry here uh, because it's not facing the right direction. So what I'm going to do is just rotate this, uh, the banking to 90% and then adjust the rectangle uh, to create a little uh, conveyor belt. And then what I did was enable rounding to get these nice uh, rounded edges at least on the spline but what we need to do to get the nice rounding on our plane is just increase the segments and that'll smooth everything out so let's just give that a width segments of uh, 150 and then we'll just make this a little bit skinnier let's see so it's just wide enough to fit uh, the plate there let's see about 60 should be good. Whoa, that's too big. 60. There we go. And then the width segments we can bring down just to remove any excess uh, geometry because we won't need any more segments going uh, in that uh, direction. So now we actually need to uh, like glue this plate on a conveyor belt so when we animate the offset, it'll actually move the plate as well. And I'll place this uh, conveyor belt material that I made uh, if I render it, you can see that it just has like slight grooves in it. I just created it with a uh, tile shader with some waves set to pretty big on the vertical scale. So we get this nice uh, arcing and that was basically how I did that. And let's go and get this plate glued onto the conveyor belt. So to do that, I'm going to use a uh, constraint tag. And constraint tags are really useful. Uh, they're very... Uh, handy in a lot of situations, very versatile. 
uh, with trying to get other objects to connect to other objects or aiming at other objects. You have all these different uh, options under the constraint tag. But what we'll need for this instance is just a clamp. So once you click the clamp uh, options, the clamp uh, tab will open up with all these options here. So you can see that immediately we have this green line that is connected to just the center of our scene. So we need to find a target to actually align or clamp our plate to, and that will be the plane. So if I bring the plane in there, you'll see that that green turns to red, and it's attached to the uh, center here. And that's the origin uh, of this entire scene. So what we want to do is change it from the origin and, do, and change it to surface, because we want this to be clamped to the surface of the plane and you'll see that by default we have this distance value and if we bring it all the way down to zero you can see that that lines up perfectly with the surface of our conveyor belt awesome so but you'll notice that if we actually adjust the offset of our plane nothing's moving yet so we need to do a little bit more work to get this working so let's just go through the options here so this mode fixed position we want to fix the position of our plate onto that object, so that's good. Uh, we want to do this normals option because that helps prevent uh, our object from intersecting the geometry of uh, the target object here. And the alignment, again, remember this is important because since our plane is aligned or oriented to the positive Y, uh, the default positive Y alignment is perfect, so that's exactly right. But if we had, uh, you know, if this was uh, plus X, we'd probably need to adjust uh, this alignment to plus X as well. All right, so let's go through our other options here. Uh, this as uh, we can go through later, uh, we need to lock the position to actually lock this onto our geometry. So once that happens, we can offset this and we can see our plate is moving. It's a little bit staggered. Uh, due to just the expressions and stuff lagging a bit behind. Uh, but you'll notice that around these corners here, it's not aligning correctly. And that is because we need to go to our as option. And right now it's aligned to plus y as none. So it's not really aligning uh, to anything of the surface. It's just aligning to the positive y. So we need something else to tell to, yeah, align to the y in relation to the surface of this uh, conveyor belt. And this is where this Fong normal and normal comes in handy. Uh, so I'm gonna tell you the difference between the Fong normal and just the normal. So I'm just gonna do normal first. And you can see that this is uh, facing the wrong direction here. And that is because it's aligned to the normal and our normal needs to be flipped upright for that to work. So we can fix that easily by going to our spline wrap here and adjusting the banking to negative 90 and that should about do it and there if we just update that'll change that will fix our viewport refreshing so you'll notice that when you move things around the viewport will kind of lag a little bit uh, and to actually uh, get rid of that we can go into our basic tab here and change the priority here so we have a spline wrap which is doing expressions and stuff like that. Uh, so if we change the priority uh, to happen a little bit later, and you can see this list is the order of operations basically. So we have animations and expressions. So if we just move this down to dynamics or generators, I'll move this to generators, uh, that will actually help us get rid of that lag. So we no longer have that crazy lag. And you'll notice that due to uh, changing the clamping as to the normal, we actually have this aligned in the positive Y, but also aligned to the normal of the surface of our conveyor belt here. So now our plate actually rotates around the edge here. So that's awesome. That's looking really good. So you might be wondering what the difference between, let's move it right there, what the difference between the normal and Fong normal is. Uh, Depending on your project, I know for this project it doesn't really matter too much, but if you notice uh, that I can switch back and forth and nothing changes at all. So I'm not sure what the difference is, but uh, either one works uh, for me. Uh, 
but yeah, so let's, uh, so now we have that plate attached and we got rid of that lag we had uh, due to the, uh, the priority here. So you can see if I brought this back to uh, expression and moved our uh, spline wrap around, you see that we have that just a little bit of lag there. So again, that this is very important to remember to change the priority to something later than expression and execute it with the generators, which happens later. And therefore, uh, the spline wrap will happen and we'll get rid of that lagging. So there we go. So then all I did was just put the sushi on the plate, made it a child of this plate. And what you want to do is if you want to move, uh, if you want to duplicate this, because I had... Uh, I think five plates, you'll notice that if you try to move this object, it won't move. And that is because we have this lock position on. So to move this plate, we need to uncheck this lock position, and then we can move it down the line here. And you'll notice that it even clamps as you move it along your object here. So we just want to move it down a little bit, and then lock position again, and then that should lock in place. And now we have two plates moving around our sushi go round conveyor belt here. So I just did that uh, a bunch more times. And I'll just go to my final composition here. So I did, th did that a bunch of times. And so I have all of these plates with all of these constraint tags and all that good stuff. And then I just animated, the only thing that's animated to move all those plates is just the offset. And due to the, the constraint tag and the align to the normal, we have these plates rotating around the edges of our uh, conveyor belt. And there you go. So that is how I got the sushi go round conveyor belt uh, using uh, constraint tags with clamping and uh, made my conveyor belt with spline wrap and a plane. So hopefully you picked all that up. And if you have any questions, make sure to hit me in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching and go create something. And if you make anything, share it. Love seeing what you do. All right, see you next time.